Be a sadist. No matter how sweet and innocent your leading characters, make awful things happen to them in order that the reader may see what they are made of. Kurt Vonnegut. You're listening to Writing Roots, brought to you by Aspen House Publishing. Welcome to Writing Roots. I'm Lee Hull. And I'm Lee Esses. We are talking today about characters, bad decisions, and why we hate them. Now, there is a difference between a good, bad decision and a bad, bad decision. Katniss in The Hunger Games, volunteering as tribute, was technically a bad decision for the character because it led to all of her problems, but it was a good decision for the story. Now compare that to at the end of Titanic where Rose is on the door and Jack is in the water. I'll never forget you, Jack, when there's plenty of room next to her. We're more than 20 years after that film was released and people still get annoyed at this terrible decision by the character. We are talking specifically about the decisions that don't make sense for the story, that don't make sense for the character, that don't fall in line with what a story should be. For me, my tolerance level is probably about a 6 out of 10. Mostly, it comes down to decisions characters make that aren't in character. This is why I hated Throne of Glass. Because the apparent prodigy assassin was a dumb assassin who didn't know how to assassin. And all of her decisions weren't made with the mindset that an assassin would or should have. Now, my tolerance for this is actually a little bit higher because if it weren't for people being stupid, we wouldn't have fun stories. So I'm giving it a 7 out of 10, but that is mostly on faith that the author actually has a purpose for this kind of thing. If you break that faith, I will put your book down and possibly light it on fire next time I need marshmallows. And you certainly won't pick up another story by that author. Absolutely not. So for me, yeah, I finished Throne of Glass. I finished it as a spite read. And I will never touch another Sarah J. Moss book. Ever. There are a lot of examples of this type of thing happening where characters are making the wrong decision that I see storytellers use just to prolong the plot. So when we talk about what it is, a handful of these are tropes. One of my least favorite tropes out there is if the characters just communicated with each other, it would be so much easier. I think this is a widely hated trope on Instagram, Bookstagram, the miscommunication trope, where it's like, can you guys just talk and actually just tell the truth to each other for two seconds? All of this will be fixed. Stop making this dumb decision because dumb reasons. And we also see these bad decisions being made only by the good guys. It's good guys fighting good guys when everyone should be all on the same side. Again, it feels like you're throwing in obstacles just to throw in obstacles. I'm going to say that no, you can't get that warrant signed off because don't ask me why. We just need to not do it this way and make your life more difficult. It has nothing to do with the problem. It has nothing to do with the solution. It is just a block in the road for the sake of it. It gets really annoying. As I mentioned earlier, the out of character decisions are really what irk me. And that's because it causes a disconnect. With the throne of glass, specifically, your main character consistently got annoyed at being underestimated. She was in a competition where being underestimated would have been an advantage, but she hated to be seen as weaker than anyone else. And it just made zero sense for an assassin character. They do their jobs better if people underestimate them. This sounds like a crime by the character, but it's really a crime by the author. Because if this character was actually a terrible assassin, and the author knew it, and the author let the readers know it, but the character didn't know it, it would have played off just fine. That disconnect comes when the author tries to say, this person is really smart, but look at them make all of these dumb decisions. So how you set up your character needs to live up to their actions in the story. 
So there are a lot of ways that characters make bad decisions within a story and it works. Just because a character is an idiot, just because they're making bad decisions doesn't mean that it's a bad thing for the story. I see this a lot in Supernatural and they make a lot of really bad decisions, but it's usually in line with their character because they put family ahead of everything. So yeah, they're going to let a possibly apocalyptic ending show up because they have to save their brother. Morons for characters are so much fun. The book series I'm reading right now, the main character always falls into the trap of needing to save the damsel in distress. He literally started a vampire war because there was a chick who needed his help. (laughs) Bad decision, dude's a moron, but it made for a great story. And it comes down to whether or not you're invested in the character. If you're invested with a character and you care about them and you understand them and those decisions fall in line with that character, it is absolutely okay. There are also going to be moments where they do make out of character decisions, but it shouldn't actually be out of character. Those decisions that they make should be showing character growth. One of my favorite ways to make it clear what kind of growth is happening to your character from the beginning of the story to the end of the story is to give them the same decision that they respond to differently. So if he's being pestered by this bully and every time the bully taunts him, he tries to break the bully's nose and then he gets beaten up. At the end of Act 3, the bully tries to pester him again. But he's changed throughout the story. Therefore, he just makes a snarky comment and makes everyone laugh at the bully and then walks away. This isn't out of character. This is an example of how the character grows. These are okay. What makes bad decisions a red flag within a story? For me, it's usually when it happens right away. When the author establishes something about the character and then immediately contradicts it with a decision that that character makes, I immediately decide that I don't like the book, that I don't like the character because it doesn't fit. And on the other side of that coin, don't have a bad decision happen too late. If it comes out of nowhere, then it feels like a convenient thing for that moment in the story and not part of the character as a whole. Now, if you really need a bad decision to be made, then there are a couple of ways to solve this problem. One of my favorites is to make sure somebody else is making the bad decision. Luke doesn't have to try to do the smuggling thing because we have Han who is interested in doing the smuggling thing. Han can make the bad decision, then we aren't left with this incongruous approach to Luke Skywalker. Whatever the decision that that character makes, if it is a bad decision, make it make sense to the story. Make it have a reason built into their character, like Katniss deciding that she's going to volunteer even though nobody from her district ever volunteers. But it's because she's doing it to save her sister and she loves her sister so much that she's willing to sacrifice herself in order to do that. So, yes, bad decision, but absolutely in line with what the character has been established to prioritize. If you are having these bad decisions to throw obstacles at your main character, you need to make sure that the obstacles, that the decisions are connected to the wider plot. They need to decide that they're going to take on the villain, even though they know they're not prepared. But they're super emotionally ramped up because somebody just died and they can't handle it. So they're going to go charge in head first and they're going to fail because it's not time for the end yet. But it's connected to the rest of the story. It all comes down to not just that decision, but the setup before that decision. We want to make sure that we understand the character so that that decision can feel like it's in character. Why didn't Rose even try to get Jack onto the raft door thing? She just goes, I love you, and then sends him off into the Arctic. If there was some argument, some moments that made that make sense, sure. Therefore, we need to set that up ahead of time. Setting up any bad decision will help your readers buy into it. 
readers absolutely understand and accept a decision that is bad within the plot line. That it's been established that this character is a bit of a hothead and they tend to be very brash and they're absolutely going to go charging forward even when they shouldn't. They're absolutely going to leave Roy Jenkins it. And that's okay if it's been established that that character is a Leroy Jenkins style character. Even if we don't agree with it, we understand it. And that's what makes it okay. One of the main reasons why the bad decisions for a character is such a red flag is that it makes the main character annoying. And that is what we're going to be talking about in our next episode. We are going to be addressing the problem of annoying main characters and why those are such big red flags. Ultimately, the great thing about bad decisions by main characters is that they're super easy to fix. There are a lot of ways to get around this. You can set it up well. You can give a different character that decision. You can do a lot of stuff with it and still make the character rich and interesting and progress the story. So make sure you spread the love in the fact that you're spreading the stupidity and enjoy tormenting your characters because ultimately them tormenting themselves is part of the fun. And then write selfishly. If you have a question or comment for our hosts or a topic you'd like us to cover, send us an email at writingroots at aspenhousepublishing.com or find us on Facebook by searching for Aspen House Publishing. <laughs>